Welcome to another episode of VIP Access. Today I'm speaking to an R&B diva. She is an R&B queen, if you also like, and somebody who I'm really into. I love her album. She's truly gifted. And today we'll be talking to her, talking about her most recent album, her upcoming projects, and her most recent song with Ben Soul, which is called Sita Chelewa. You already know who I'm talking to. Prishan is right here on VIP Access. Hi, babe. Hi, Mambo. <laughs> Poor son, how are you doing? Good, you look so nice. Oh, you too. You are so pretty. And your voice is just like a calming, I would say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. When would you say that um, you started developing this passion for music? Did you always have it from when you were younger? Um, did you know you'd um, one day take it up as a professional career? Um, and did you get um, support, you know, around your friends, around your family? How's the, how's the journey been for you? Yeah, I've been singing it since I was really small. I like, choir, church. There's a children's choir. I used to be part of that in Deliverance, Umoja. And there I met a friend of mine called Becky. She's part of a group now called Banbeka. Yeah, that's my childhood best friend. Oh, nice. Yeah, we used to make music a lot. Her dad was a singer and a producer, so I was at her house. I, I know they were tired of me at that house. <laughs> I was at their house a lot, and that really contributed to my interest in music. I knew I could sing, but no one from where I lived sang, and I didn't have that image of what an artist could be until I went to Becky's house. And their dad was so cool, and he used to make music, and that's when I developed interest. But... Of course, you're a student and you have school, and people didn't really consider music like a profession at the time. So I used to do it on the side. We used to have small gigs. We used to have like a small group called Cool Kids or something. We used to perform here and there when we could. We went into high school, drifted. And then I come after high school, I was broke. I was dead broke, and I needed to make money. And there was an opportunity to make money by singing. All you had to do was just um, sing. A written song. There's a songwriter, she used to write music. We used to sing it out so that she could be able to sell the music to other artists. And that's how I started going to the studio. Okay. Yeah. And while you're you know, putting in your vocals for other people, you started realizing or feeling like this could be my song. I could be already, I could have already put out several songs. From there onwards, how did it get to, you know, 2020 when you decided to take music professionally? You're working on your debut EP and working on your debut album, which is Gifted. Yes. Tell me about that journey in between uh, then until most recently, you know, when you decided I'm going hard and harm on this. So after, I, after the whole uh, demo singer thing, I got a free song out of that, uh, uh, the job. And I got into the studio with a producer called Ben Ali. And he knew I couldn't write music for myself because I was already used to singing other people's songs. So he had someone come in, come in. He was called Nem. He was a rapper. He helped me write the song. And then when the song was done, I was, so, I was like, yeah, you know what? You know? But at the same time, I didn't know what the process of being an artist was. So I just recorded the song and I went home and I thought that was it. But then I got a call from J Blessing. And he was like, I really like your song. I want to shoot a music video. Oh, really? Yeah, and I was like, what? Hey, that's a big deal. I know. <laughs> I didn't realize how much of a big deal it was back then. Uh -huh. But then when it sunk, I was like, this is actually a really big deal. These people do not know me. Yeah. They do not owe me anything. And he was like, I'll even do it for free. Really? Yeah. He was like, I'll even do it for free. So what we have to figure out is this like, cost of like the venue and all that. And the lady who, had, um, who used to give me the songwriting gigs was like, I'll pay for that. Yeah, he was like, I'll pay for that. And I think from that, we were like, you know, instead of just doing this one song, maybe we could, you know, work something out. But the thing was, me and this songwriter didn't have experience in the music industry. So we would try, we would really, really try, but we'd make so many mistakes and very costly mistakes. So I was not able to be consistent with the releases. So I think I did that one song, and then it took me like one year to release the next one. Yeah, I still hadn't figured out like the whole commercial artist thing. Yeah. But I, I was, my, my foot was in the water, like, yeah. I was in the process, I just hadn't figured it out right. Until 2020 now, when COVID came and we were at home and we had all the time, I used to go online and sing for people a lot, like on my Instagram. And then there were all these um, small, small competitions for creatives 
where they'd give us opportunities to perform and get paid for it. And the small money that I accumulated from that is what I used to record my EP. Uh, it was called Feelings. I wanted to do it for myself because I was like, I've been going to the studio here and there and I only have two, three songs to show for it for, and I've been going for like four years. So I want something to solidify like my, my stamp, like Prishon is here and it's, she makes music. So I, I went to record the EP with the small money that I had, shot a couple of videos, and that's what got the attention of the label that I'm in now, and that's how I ended up recording my album. Nominal story. Wow, wow, wow. I did not expect this story. It's so interesting how much um, things are happening behind the scenes and all the struggles, all the challenges, all the hurdles the artists have to go through before um, you know, getting noticed or before getting to a certain pedestal. Because for me, I, I really started getting to know you properly when your um, album came out. Then I was like, uh, who's this? Where has she been? But, it, but you've been, you know, you've been there already, you know, doing stuff, releasing songs, but we just hadn't noticed or seen. Um, and kudos, you know, to your team and to the label and to this album because it was really well done, you know, even for listening to the album, uh, I could still feel like there's, hey, there's so much potential. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's not really, it's not the, the best, yeah. you know, there's so much that is still going to come. Yeah. But then it's a really great album. So um, tell me about the album itself. You know, how has it done so far from uh, the, the release, which was in 2020? Or 2021. Yes. So how has it done from 2021? It's just been a year. Are you working on another album? But really, I would like to talk more about Gifted. Um, I think going into recording Gifted was just me trying to explore every aspect of myself. Because just before um, the album is when I recorded the EP. And that was, that was the first time I, I wrote music for myself. So in this album, I just wanted to explore every aspect. What can I write? What can I not write? What sounds good for me vocally? So that album is what I used to really figure out like what Prishon is about. Like I figured out that I'm an R&B singer. Because I tried a, a bunch of stuff on the album. If you listen, Kuna Kapuka Uko, there's a bit of Chakacha, there's pretty much everything. So that album for me was just to ex fully explore who I am. And like you said, that was just like a tip of... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so the album did really well, honestly. It was my first album and... My, my favorite album song definitely is Bunda with Reckless. Oh. Ah, it's dope, it's dope. Uh, then there's another one. Um, well, there's Sita Chelewa with Ben Sol, of yeah. course, because it's like a perfect ballad and, and you know, duo singing to each other. I like that. There's like a play, you know, he's telling you this, you're telling him yeah. that. And then I also like um, Nipe Sababu. I, I think that's my favorite song. Oh my God, I love that song. And there's also another song with, um, which I like, and I, I don't remember the name, but with... Um, Masauti or Christoph? The Christoph song. Really? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's a, like a, a career one. Money. Yeah. <laughs> You know, a girl I know, I, I know it's about money. <laughs> What's the song, name of the song? Propaganda, Nama Drama, Atunaga, Naki Cheki Haga, Mahanja. It's about, it's a song about being with someone who you can make money with, yeah. who you can make boss yeah, moves like with. Mm. Living, yeah. It's very, it's very street smart, smart actually. Yeah. It's a street smart, smart exactly. jam. <laughs> get it that was the point of the song yeah you're that you're, you're that you you you're that um i would say smart and intelligent in this in the sense of how you write your lyrics how you sing because when i listen to the lyrics i wouldn't say ati this is just an r&b singer i think you are an r&b singer but based on your album and what you sing about it shows me that you're such an artist and you have so much to express and sometimes you even express some inspirations that you get from other people or other places. Maybe you meet an artist like Christoph and you're like, let me get into Christoph's um, state of mind, yeah, you know. Yeah. I can feel that and that's really cool. Wow, I'm so happy for you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm so impressed. Look at you. Yeah, you know, you know the album pretty well. Thank you so much. So tell me about working with Ben Soul, Sita Chelewa. It's such a fun favorite, you know. I was at a concert where you were performing and everybody was like, oh, yeah. Like, is there going to be another song with him? Or are you going to do another song, like, with another male artist? Because it's, it's, you, you kind of uh, fit so well in those sort of collaborations. 
even even not just like those who sing like Ben Soul, but even the rappers. I like that you started, you know, you put those in your album. Definitely, there's gonna be more. I have a couple of collabs coming, and um, of course, kuna male guys in there. The song with Ben Soul, funny story. When I wrote the song in the beginning, I didn't seek one with creators like duets, but then I wanted there's something that was missing. There was just something that was missing, and Ben came to studio, and it just became perfect. Ben is so talented. He's such a good writer, and he's like street smart. He brought the street smartness into the song. Yeah, it was just a, a perfect mix. So I hope we get to work together again. I'd be so honored. Yeah, I'd be so honored. Yeah. So, um, yeah, moving on from this project to the next project. I know you've been working, you've been in the studio. You've talked about other collaborations that you've already done. So tell us uh, an album and, and when. I will be dropping an EP. I don't have, I know, girl. <laughs> I don't have a date yet uh, because for my EPs, EPs are mostly like five, six songs, but I don't like to just make five, six songs. I like to make a couple and then choose from ten, maybe ten songs and decide which ones I really like the most. Yeah, so once I have those, I have a couple, but they're not ten yet. So I want to have all those and then I'll decide when to release it. But it has to be really soon because we have elections, yeah, and we don't know how that will go. So it's best to release music before that. So let's just say maybe July... Yeah. Now that your um, debut album is out, doing well, you now you know with a label, things are starting to move in the yeah. sense that the industry has opened up their gigs here and there, not like uh, a year and a half ago when everything was shut down. Um, how do you see yourself um, in the industry at the moment? Do you feel, you know, are you happy with where you, you are? Do you feel like um, you need sort of more support or what, what do you feel is the next stage, um, you know, for Prishan? Yeah, for me... Um the reason why I made the album is that I wanted to have enough content. So now that I have the content, I think that the thing that I want most right now is just like the marketing aspect of things, the numbers. I feel like I don't want to make so much music that people will never get to hear. So yeah, for me, that's the thing that I want most right now, just to get the music to as many people as possible. Yeah, that's the goal of me and the label right now. Yeah. And you guys are still uh, obviously working to um, continue promoting the album. Yeah. I think there were some singles that were even released of the album recently and then now there's the video. Yeah. And, and will there be another video of the album? Yeah, yeah. There's okay. going to be definitely going to be one more before the EP. Okay. You're not only a musician but you're also an entrepreneur. You have a beauty company that you've been running. Um, it's been successful. Tell us, tell me about that, you know. Uh, what's your beauty company like? When did you start it? You know, and why did you decide to get into the beauty industry? Although I think the answer will be pretty much uh, straightforward. You know, a lot of um, superstars, especially the female ones, end up you know working with various brands as brand ambassadors or end up creating their own brand. So that's what you're already on to. So tell us more. Um, Sean Beauty is my baby. Um, in the beginning, maybe like two years ago, I used to buy lip glosses and lashes. Yeah, part of my brand. It's a lip gloss. Sean Beauty, yes. made for you. Yes. Nice. Yes. Uh -huh. I am obsessed with lip gloss. I am a lip gloss girl, and I like a nice lash. And most of the time, I never get what I want, and it used to really frustrate me. And also, being an artist has really taught me how to learn how to do makeup on the go. The times where I'm on set, and the makeup artist doesn't show up and I have to figure things out. I've learned so much the past couple of years and I just felt like it was time for me to have something that's my own that I could perfect the way I know it should be. And the reason why I feel like it's doing really well is because people get it. Do you know, like, <laughs> there are people like me who just want that gloss and that lash and they get it. Yeah, so honestly, I hope to be, to add more products to the so the beauty line, but for now it's just lip glosses and lashes. I wanted to see how that goes and test out the market and then before I can expand to other things. But so far so good. I'm really, really grateful. Yeah. My dream came true. I wanted to be 25 with a business and I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy. Oh my God, you're so young. You're 25. You've done so much. I, sometimes I feel like I, I, ha I could have done so much by now. I don't know if I was those teenage girls who used to think by 25... I'll have this, I'll have yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. 
but the reality is <laughs> no 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 so far you're doing quite good for yourself um and you have to remember that and give yourself a pat on the back you know not every other 25 year old has a you know beauty company albums out i don't know what because i remember even when I, i was 25 i kind of knew myself where i was going but i was still trying to figure out stuff yeah, yeah so i hadn't even like started my own business you know so good job girl <laughs> sometimes i think everyone is just really hard on themselves I, that's true. yeah that's true. yeah are you going to be collaborating with Victoria anytime soon Victoria is such a superstar he is right here we're going to pin him down and make him work with me <laughs> fan of a fan yeah, hmm? maybe 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 you and uh, Motoria can do a Chris Brown and Tiga because they have the fan fan of a fan album series i mean why not yeah i'm in as long as it's in i'm in yeah thank you for this platform because now Motoria is here <laughs> no i'm just kidding Motoria is really good and i think we're going to make music i hope i'd like to know about uh, Nipe Sababu i feel like well that's my favorite song But then I feel like that's where like you sang your heart out. Yeah. And it's also wonderful like when I heard you perform it at the concert, you know, it sounded just like the album and you you, you were doing all the runs. I feel like that's the song like that makes you, you know, be you. Yeah. So tell me about this specific song. Uh Nipe Sababu was actually inspired by a famous couple. They were going through a hard time and When you're going through a hard time pap- who, who are these who are these I'm, I'm sure the, you'll figure it out by the end of the interview when you're going through a hard time publicly wait is it who are nameless no you, no <laughs> i'm not going to say but when you're going through a hard time publicly it's twice as hard so i just tried to put myself in their shoes where give me a reason why i should still stay despite all this embarrassment you know it's public it's very out there so just give me a reason why i should stay Yeah. That was the purpose of the song. And when I when I was writing the song, in my head I was like nilikuwa na jeka kama that party, but as I was writing it I realized that I've been in situations where I wanted assurance like tell me why I should stay in this situation any much longer. Yeah. So that was that really I didn't expect myself to write kwanza Kiswahili. I'm not really good at writing in Swa, but that really pushed me and I'm 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 happy it came out that way. See yourself, you know, from being in the studio singing songs that were written for other people to being your own really dope songwriter at only 25. <laughs> Can you believe it? <laughs> Which message would you like to share out to the fans, everybody watching, my fans who are pre-shown, wale who are kwa yani wana support to, you know, your good vibes and even those who were not fans recently but have been very supportive you know Kina the, the likes of Jay Blessing the lady who you know paid for the space yeah. uh, to shoot your video there are those people who've been down with you even before we got to know your yeah. name you know what would you like to tell them let me start with those people Akina Jay Blessing Susan Munyoki the people really stood with me when no one knew who I was the hardest thing about standing with someone who no one knows is that you have to prove to like See, do you see that was their work and I really appreciate that because sometimes when I was in those moments I'd doubt myself and then when I just be like for these people to invest their time and their resources into me it means there's something there and sometimes I wouldn't see it but it moments of realization to like that made me just keep going so I'm really really grateful for that and just like the financial support being an artist is really expensive really expensive and for you to be consistent you you just have to have a really good team So I'm really really grateful for my team. To my fans. I can't believe I can say that now. I have fans. <laughs> of course, uh, me, me being one of them. My fans are appreciative to Nongele. Kama kuna watu wenye nawapenda ni fans wangu. I feel like I get the most support from the strangers. But when you are on Idri, I don't know what I did to deserve it, but I'm really really grateful. And I just hope that I continue to entertain you and inspire you with great new music. I do it for you. I, Genuinely, I just do it for you. And to my family and to my friends, thank you for holding me down. When no one knew who I was, you're the people who used to come to my shows and cheer me on. You guys would cheer so loud, everyone would be like, "Kwani uni nani?" You know? I'm so grateful. Yeah, keep it shot, keep it shot, keep it shot. <laughs>
Thank you so much, um, Prishan. It's been such an honor to meet you. I mean, to meet the person who I hear and that I love their music, then to meet them and find that they're really, like, really sweet and just a nice individual and just really hardworking as well. So it's, it's a really an honor. Thank you so much for this interview. Um, I do wish you well in everything um, you do, your endeavors. I cannot wait for your next EP or album, whatever, like video beauty products, all of them. I mean, <laughs> yeah, so Asante Sana, it's um, an honor. Everybody, um, Gifted, the album is streaming worldwide. You can uh, reach out to Prishon through her social media or check out her album everywhere. Make sure you buy the music. Do not steal the music. You have to buy the music. Capitalize it on that. Buy the music. Asante Sana, babe. Thank you.